Hello and welcome back to eCabinet's Tips and Tricks. My name is Scott Marshburn and today I would like to show you how that I create uh, tangent arcs for different uh, cutouts. Like for example if you wanted a cutout that had a smooth flowing group of arcs here that are tangent to each other without any sharp corners in here where the, where the arcs meet. Um, if you've ever tried this directly in e-cabinets, um, obviously you have found out that it's not all that easy. Um, it can be done if you have enough patience, but um, I'm going to show you real quick what can what happens I'm going to offset this is a 36 inch part so I'm going to offset this line by 18 inches to get my center here and I'm going to offset it again by 9 on each side and then I'm going to offset those by 4.5 And might as well do these two. What the heck? So um, now I need to get my height for this bottom arc here. I'm just going to use two inches. And I'm going to move that one up. And I'm going to move it up one more. So what I want to do is I want to create an arc from this point to this point to this point. And then I want to create an arc that will um, and smoothly join together to make a smooth flowing uh, design there. So I'm going to do my first one. And I'm going to click on this intersection and this intersection and this intersection. Let's see how we done here. It is not working. So let's do this. Let's go home and make sure we got object snap on. Let's turn angle snap off. We're going to trim one entity. I'm going to trim this one to here and this one to here. And now we're probably going to need to go ahead and trim this one to here and this one to here. So now maybe we can snap pretty easy. I want to see if it has snapped to that line and to that line and to that line. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that looks good. So what I'm going to do now is I want to create a tangent arc to come all the way to this corner. And click three point arc again. And we'll see how close we are as far as being actually tangent. As you can see, there's an obvious transition here. Um, now that may be fine for you if that's what you're okay with, but this is not a true tangent arc. Now we can sit here as long as you want to and keep playing with this middle point here. Um, and if you're good at, at math and geometry and trigonometry or whatever it takes to come up with the coordinates of this point right here, this center point of that arc, I'm sure that the, it can be calculated. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another program that has a, a feature in it that will automatically make this arc here tangent to this one. So I'm just going to remove all this geometry and delete all entities. Now I'm going to open up DraftSite. This is a free program that you can download. Um, does it cost anything? It's asking me to activate. Wow. 
once a year you have to reactivate this. So let's see, what is my industry here? Okay, so now what we want to do is create a rectangle just like we did in eCabinets. So I'm going to start with a line here, my line tool, and I'm going to start in my zero, zero location, my home location. So I'm just going to type in zero, comma, zero, enter, and I want to go straight up to zero, comma 10 and enter so there's my line there and I'm going to use my offset feature here offset and I'll click on it and it's asking me for a distance right here I want 36 inches and I just want the source entity this is basically just like e cabinets click on that and click to the right and but I'll set it by 36 inches. Now I just need to connect these two lines and it'll snap to those lines. And now I need to draw a line in the center. Now this will allow you to, if you, you could use a rectangle, but by using lines it allows you to snap to the midpoint of that line. So I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to use my offset again. And I'll, this time I want 9. And click on this one. And that one. Now I need to offset again. And by 4.5. And, and offset. And offset. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this bottom line right here by a sixteenth of an inch and this is just so that when we send this into e cabinets it doesn't make that arc two lines by cutting right to the bottom and we'll let that arc be up just a little bit so if I zoom in here I can trim that line so I'm going to use my trim tool here these scissors trim and it's asking you to cutting edges so I'm going to click on this line and this line and now gives you an option enter to specify all entities or specify cutting edges I'm going to hit enter and now that's going to be to specify the segments to remove I'm going to zoom right in here I want to get rid of you Okay, now if I hit escape, I can go ahead and delete this line by selecting it and my delete tool here. Zoom out. Now I need to offset that line by two inches. Let's specify the distance. And I don't need to trim these lines, so I'm going to use my arc tool here now. Arc three points. I'm going to click on U. See, it automatically snaps to that intersection. And what I want to do is zoom in where I can see here so I don't accidentally click on this line. I want to be on that one. Then right to there. So there's that arc. Now I want to create a tangent arc. And Draft site does have a feature in their arc tool that will allow you to do that. I'm going to click on my arc tool again. And this time I'm going to use the option append. And you can see it gives you 
little shortcut here. If you type in A, capital A, and hit enter, you hit capital A and hit enter. Okay, now it's asking you to specify the line or arc. So this is it's asking you what one do you want to be tangent to. So I want to be tangent to this side of this arc. So I'm going to click on it. And you can see it, it starts out an arc and it's got a, a line that controls the tangency of that arc. So if I just come all the way down to here, you can see that it's adjusting automatically. And I'm going to let it snap right to this corner. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click on my arc tool again. I'm going to hold down my shift key, A, and enter. And you can see all this happening down here. Specify line or arc. And I'm going to click on that. And now I can go to this corner. Now, the only thing I need to do is remove all the extra lines I don't want. So I'm going to hit my escape key to get out of the arc mode there. I'm going to click on the lines I want to remove. Get rid of these. Come on now. And this last one here. And then I can click on my delete tool. And there's our geometry. Now we need to export that into eCabinets. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to click on File. And I'm going to click on Export. Export and Export Drawing. Okay, I don't have any entity selected. Um, and you really don't have to unless you've got more lines on here that lines that you do not want to export if that's the case then you can just simply um, encompass the or either either encompass the uh, entities that you want to export or just select them one by one um, then you could go file export drawing and you can see it says selected entities. You also, if you didn't have any selected and you wanted to do all entities, then just click on all entities. Um, unit systems, whatever unit system you're using, I'm using inches. And I want to click on browse because I want to put it in my e cabinets location. So it would be users. Public, public documents, Thermwood, eCabinet systems, and I have a folder called My Geometry, and another folder called eCabinet Tips. And now we need to rename this. So I'm going to just call this um, our test or something like that. And we need to save it as a DXF file by default. Draft site as um, DWG extension selected for you. If you click on this drop down, you'll see a bunch of different options. Um, as far as DXF goes, I use this R2007 2009 ASC II or whatever that is right there. DXF that seems to work pretty good for me, and I'm going to click on save. And then OK. Don't forget to click OK. Now you can either close this out or you can save it. Whatever you want to do. Um, it's in eCabinet. So I'm going to bring eCabinets back up. And we are in our contour mode. If you're not, you need to go to contour mode. And click on the file. The folder here. And go into... The folder that you saved it in and open it and it'll bring it up. Might take it a few minutes or a second or two, but there's your geometry right there. And as you can see there are nice smooth flowing curves. So now you would go into um, exit to contour mode and right click 
and create part using closed contour and click on next and you want to remove the geometry yeah, that's fine now back to main yes I want to keep the changes and there's our part um, in another video I'll see if I can demonstrate how you can constrain these things so that when you resize this part it will resize based on the constraints but until then um, thank you for watching um, please subscribe to my channel and so you can get all the latest tips and tricks as I come up with them if you have any questions or comments please post them and again thank you for watching and have a good day